Hi, we're here talking with Johan Harstad, author of Buzz Aldrin, What Happened to You and All the Confusion, originally published in Gildendal in 2005 when the author was 26 years old, now in 2011 making its uh, North American debut from Seven Stories Press in New York. So can you tell us something about Buzz Aldrin, What Happened to You and All the Confusion, and what led you to write it? Yeah. It started with an idea of uh, trying to uh, consider people who, who seem quite non-typical for our time. I mean, in, in, in modern times it seems that everyone is trying to get famous or uh, uh, become like either a well-known singer or artist or a uh, participant in one of those reality shows or talent contest or, or something. I wanted to have um, a character who slightly opposed to that but not in a very uh, like uh, aggressive way. He just said, I'm not into that. I'm, I'm going to, to do the opposite. Not as a protest, really, but but just as a way of, of living his life, basically. And uh, so the main main character in the book is Matthias. He is a, he's a gardener, uh, and uh, his friends would have loved him to do something other than being a, doing gardening because he is probably the best singer uh, ever in Norway. He's a, he's a great vocalist, um, but he refuses to sing. And uh, the reason he chooses to be a gardener is because it's very quiet. He can be very anonymous and uh, stay in the background. And that is what he, he wants with, with his life. He, he doesn't need anyone to tell him that, uh, oh, he's great at what he's doing. Because he knows when he's good. And uh, his, his life's hero is, is Buzz Aldrin, who, of course, was the second man on the moon, only 19 minutes after, after Neil Armstrong. So he, he tries basically to, to live his life in accordance with what he thinks Buzz Aldrin uh, does. And, uh, and this leads him on a very strange voyage, uh, taking him to, uh, to the remote country of the Faroe Islands, which is a group of very small islands situated between Norway and uh, Iceland in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. I remember at one point we have a map in, in our office of the world and uh, I was trying to find the Faroe Islands at one point yeah. and it's just not, I it's think not they're omitted from, yeah. really from the map, <laughs> so it's sort of this I know, and, that, and when I was researching your book, I, I, I found that as well, many times, even with, uh, with maps of, uh, of just Europe, and you would have, of course, uh, Great Britain and you would have like sh the Shetland Islands and even the, I'm not sure what you call it in English, the Orkin, Orkneys. Yeah, the Orkneys. Uh, which I think is even smaller than the Faroe Islands. But for some reason, they just... Um, Something about these islands yeah, makes people yeah. not want to. And of course, it could be that it's interesting when you arrive in the Faroe Islands, either by, by, uh, by, by boat or if you come by airplane, it's usually hidden in the, in the, in the fog, so you have to kind of know <laughs> where it is. So in the beginning, when you're, when you're uh, approaching in the airplane, you think that uh, we're just doing a, like a random dive here but they have started the final approach. So it's a, it's a hidden treasure. Uh -huh. yeah. Where this character is sort of hiding out over there. I mean, it's, it's interesting. One of the reviews, I believe, actually called your book The Great Faroese Novel. Do you yeah. feel that you've sort of done this? Or? No, I don't think so. I mean, there are uh, a few Faroe Island novels, which, of course, are to, to, uh, to a much larger de degree, uh, The Great Faroe Island novel. And... Since I'm not from there, I, I, of course, I could probably not do it. But uh, at the time the, the novel came out, there wasn't too many novels written about modern-day Fair Island life. Mm -hmm. So in a way, I was trying to say something about it. And I was trying to write a book that would also be like a celebration of this very small place. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm, I'm very happy that the people of the Fair Islands have... Uh, have taken to it and they seem to, in, to enjoy the book and uh, yeah and sort of when the interesting thing is also that the book you know just that it's making its American debut the book actually has quite a bit to do in a certain way with American culture certainly and you have an American character who sort of mm. comes in if you could speak sort of yeah. you know what was going on with that with I think we would, at least in, in Norway and uh, my generation, we, we, you know, we grew up, grew up with all these things. We grew up with all these films and all these TV series and all the literature and all the uh, 
politics, really. I think uh, when I come to America, I'm, I'm surprised somewhat, uh, surprised to hear that the Americans are surprised to hear <laughs> that we, we know American culture because it's, it's such a big part of our lives. Um, <laughs> Both the good parts and the bad parts of, of American culture and American politics, of course. Um, so when I was writing the book, I, I, I wasn't trying to add into the mix like mm -hmm. a lot of uh, pop culture that didn't feel um, feel personal or anything. Right. It's just a, it's just the music and the films I grew up with, mm -hmm. uh, which I guess is more or less the same that most Americans grew up with. Um, and in Norway, these things coexist with Norwegian culture and, and Scandinavian culture and European culture, um, and it's sometimes difficult to uh, find out which is which. I think, <laughs> which you will see if you, if you, when you come to Norway. Um, <laughs> also, how Norwegians more and more tend to incorporate. Uh, English words or phrases in their, in their daily speech. Right, because there's so much of the book is there's like long quotes from things like Steve Martin films yeah. or like lyrics or different things like that. that mm. are, I mean, I think because the, the songs Matthias are singing usually are even English, yeah. right? Like it's which is. And again, this is, has to do with our upbringing and, and our the different culture we was um, the different aspects of culture we, we experienced when we were growing up. And the reason I'm, I'm doing this, the reason I'm, I'm letting you know which songs they're listening to, which films they are watching, or, or, or anything is, in a way, it's the same as doing a, like a. It, it's a part of the psychological portrait in a, in a way. I mean, the music you're listening to more or less defines who you are, right? And the same with the, with the films. So instead of just talking about the characters, how they feel, or, or who they are, and uh, oh, she was like this and that. You can also say that she's just listening to the cardigan, so she mm. she's into uh, LA story or, or whatever. Right. Yeah. So this is your writing gets compared to a lot of people. I believe Jonathan Safran Foer is usually a touchstone. Murakami's a touchstone. You spoke at the Murakami Festival. Yeah. Um, I, th I can see Gunter Grass a little bit. Do you think that these are sort of fair comparisons, or who do you sort of look to as what you're writing in the tradition of, or do you think yeah. you're sort of starting from a different place altogether? It's difficult for me to say because since I'm since I'm writing it, I'm kind of just living inside. <laughs> right. It, so, yeah. so it's always difficult. But of course, being being when when Seven Four or Murakami is mentioned in the same sense, it's, <laughs> it's, always, a, it's always a pleasure because I think those those are two very great writers, and even Gunnar Gross as well. Um, what I do like with both Safran Four and Murakami is their, at least that's what how I see it, their uh, freedom in, in the way they're writing. They seem to say that, okay, I want to do this, so I'm just doing it. Um, like, for instance, Safran Four with the included graphics in his, mm -hmm. in his second novel, or Murakami, who just kind of strolls along in his prose and uh, he takes the which it takes uh, mm -hmm. almost accidentally it feels right i'm probably more of a planned writer i think than murakami <laughs> i could never just start and then see where it goes i have to know i have to know where i'm supposed to go so i can deviate from the plan all the time and just uh, get lost in it well speaking of this when when can we expect your next next american book <sighs> well um, first i have to get home of course yes <laughs> since i'm now in new york but um, if all goes well, it, it sh could be out in, in Norway in 2012, next year. Um, so then after that, it, it's up to Seven Stories Press, of course. I see. <laughs> as quickly as we can do yeah. it. As quickly as we can do it. So okay. Johan, I wanted to thank you very much. Thank and you. everyone everyone has to buy this book, uh, Buzz Aldrin, What Happened to You in All the Confusion, on sale everywhere. Thank you very much. Thank you.